Good evening and welcome to St. Joseph Parish. We celebrate this evening the Holy Thursday Last Supper. Together we pray from the order of worship at that first Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good evening, everyone. And as we gather for this Mass of the Lord's Supper, we turn to our Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Bread of Life. 
And so let us then turn to our Savior in our hearts, and as we first call to mind our sins, so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. You forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share the lamb. In proportion to the number of persons who take part, who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep 
or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and staff in your hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, 
broke it, and said, This is my body that it is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of our Lord until he comes again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, Fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you were clean, but not all, for he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This past Sunday, Palm Sunday, we waved palm branches in the air, just like the crowds welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem did nearly 2,000 years ago. However, that gesture was not merely an act to try to recreate something that happened historically. 
Rather, when we liturgically celebrate as we did on Palm Sunday and continue to do during this Holy Week, these liturgical rites, what we are actually doing is entering not into the historical event, but as it passes down to us in mystery. We allow God to make present for us in faith, here and now, what Jesus did once so long ago. We remember what Jesus did. But it's not just any type of remembering, but it's this unparalleled act of liturgical recalling we call anamnesis. It's a Greek word. We get our English word amnesia from it, having to do with remembering or lack thereof. Anamnesis finds its roots in the Jewish celebration of the Passover, as was recounted for us tonight in the first reading, and it means to remember back to. But this act of remembrance is not merely a passive process by which we recall something so long ago that just happened, but rather we actually enter into what God has done for us in the Paschal mystery, the death, the resurrection of Jesus, his son. Therefore, this week that we call holy isn't so much about history as it is about mystery. The mystery of faith. We proclaim that at each Mass during the Eucharistic prayer. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Remembrance is at the heart of who we are as God's people. And this mystical act of anamnesis, of remembrance, takes place in a powerful way tonight in our celebration of the Mass of the Lord's Supper. And St. Paul, in our second reading tonight, he speaks to this. He says, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, broke it, and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the same with the cup of his precious blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, this word remembrance is not just some empty ritual but anamnesis in action, remembering in such a powerful way that what God has done and has accomplished is now made present for us to receive and be renewed in. Truly, in liturgy, we pass over from history into mystery. But what are we actually entering into through this sacred act of remembrance? Are we simply making present the Last Supper when Jesus said those words, do this in remembrance of me? So much more than that. St. Paul says, I receive from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over. On the night Jesus was betrayed, that is tonight, Holy Thursday night. After Jesus had first washed his disciples' feet and then celebrated the Passover with them at the Last Supper, he went out to the Garden of Gethsemane near the Mount of Olives, where he was handed over to the Romans by Judas, betrayed. On the night he was handed over. And then his passion began, which, as we know, culminates on Good Friday with his death on the cross. In other words, in offering up at the Last Supper, bread and wine truly become his body and blood, Jesus was forever joining the sacrifice of the Eucharist at the Last Supper with his perfect sacrifice on the cross. And what we celebrate tonight in a unique way 
as we celebrate at each and every Mass, is doing all of this in memory of Him, so that that sacrifice by which we were saved is again made present for us to be renewed in. In mystery, we enter into that one historical moment in time that is meant for our salvation. And we are renewed in that gift of salvation once given to us in baptism, renewed every time we receive our Lord in Holy Communion. What do we call Christ's sacrifice on the cross for us? Mercy. God's divine mercy, by which he doesn't give us what our sins truly deserve, but by which he gives us so much more than we could ever merit. You know, on the cross, God's justice and mercy meet. And the price of eternal exacting justice was paid for by the total mercy of Jesus' perfect sacrifice. It's that same sacrifice that we receive in Holy Communion. As the Lord takes our sins upon him and forgives them, and gives his life for us so that we who eat his flesh and drink his blood may live forever. But our faith in Jesus is not only about what he has done for us. It's also about what Jesus continues to desire doing through us. For as Jesus said in the gospel passage we just heard tonight, which again took place at right before the Last Supper, I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. In other words, the divine mercy that we receive in the Eucharist isn't just meant for me, myself, and I, for my sanctification and my salvation. Rather, as Jesus shows us, Holy Communion is first about union with our Lord so that we can be more united with one another. And so in the holy sacrifice of the Mass, even as the bread and wine are transformed into the very body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ, that Eucharist is meant to transform us as well, more into the image of our Lord, who came not to be served, but to serve to give his life as a ransom for many. God bless you. Tonight, following diocesan guidance, we will not have the customary washing of the feet. Instead, we will now stand and offer our prayers to our Father in heaven. We who have received the Lord's gift of forgiveness and salvation now humbly present our petitions to our Heavenly Father. For our Holy Father, our bishops and priests, whose ordination was instituted at the Last Supper, that their consecrated lives of priestly service may continue to flow from the Eucharist, which they offer in the person of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace that the blood of the divine Lamb may keep the destructive blow of war and oppression from us, and that each of us may partake of the Lamb with staff in hand, ready for the journey that justice will demand of us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who are far from the sacraments, for the sick and addicted, the imprisoned and the abused, the lonely and the poor, 
that this night of love and suffering may draw them into communion with Jesus, who has the remedy for their wounds. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who share in this Eucharist, remember, remembering most vividly that hour when Jesus showed us the very depths of his love, that we might express our gratitude toward him by being faithful in all that he asks of us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick and suffering from COVID-19 and other serious illnesses, especially those who are hospitalized and dying at this time, may God grant, according to his divine will, grace and abundance to provide healing, comfort, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of Ellen Matragano, whom we pray for in a special way at this Mass today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed and for all of the intentions in our prayer basket, as well of those we now mention in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of Israel, you fed your people manna in the desert. Make us worthy to receive your son, the living bread from heaven. Graciously grant what we ask in his holy name, Jesus the Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please note this evening that no collection will be taken up. However, after Mass, you may place your offerings in the collection basket in St. Hubert Lobby. At this time, we will now have the presentation of the holy oils, blessed and consecrated by Bishop Gaynor at the Chrism Mass this past Monday at St. Patrick Cathedral in Harrisburg. And now I invite members of our parish community to come forward as they present to our parish the oils that have been consecrated and blessed by Bishop Gaynor. The oil of the sick. May the sick who are anointed with this oil experience the compassion of Christ and his saving love in body, mind, and soul. The Holy Chrism. Through anointing with this perfumed chrism, may children and adults who are baptized and confirmed and presbyters who are ordained experience the gracious gift of the Holy Spirit. The Oil of Catechumens. Through anointing with this oil, May our catechumens who are preparing to receive the saving waters of baptism be strengthened by Christ to resist the power of Satan and reject evil in all its forms.
Following the presentation of the bread and wine, you're invited, those of you who brought food items to benefit the Danville Food Bank, to bring those forward and place them here at the foot of the altar. Please now come forward. Holy Church. Amen. And with your spirit.
Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection,
redemption, you have set us free. Amen. And with your spirit. Yeah. 
Together we pray the people's antiphon on page eight. Justice. 